Welcome to Big Brother NSFW. We are joined tonight by James Ryan, the original Veto King from BB6 and the first All-Stars. James, how are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, I have to start asking you, uh, you shared a video recently on your Twitter uh, that made me so happy. Uh, Tyler, apparently, on the live feeds has been calling out Old School Big Brother, saying Old School Big Brother's boring. And you shared a video of, can you just set this up? What was going on? All right. So um, the video that you were talking about was uh, Danielle from season three and all stars chicken, George and Dr. Will and myself. So during originally in jury, we were sequestered in uh, Mexico in Cabo, but then hurricane John hurricane Juan came through. So we had to move and they stuck us in this house in Palm Springs. Um, us having all done this before, we're just kind of like, what the fuck are we going stir crazy in there? It was nuts. So we had convinced them to take us on an outing. Producers or the handlers like golf, how we like golf. So we were just like, sure, fuck it, we'll go drink. Well, Chicken George and I partnered up. Will and Danielle partnered up. How we played through with the producers. And we just we just got destroyed. We took our water cooler and we filled it with like, I think it was a jar of tequila, uh, handle of tequila, some rum, whatever juice, water, ice we could find. And just literally, we tried playing for a little bit and we just got so mangled. We were like, no, no one's watching us. Like, fuck this. So we drove the golf cart off the, um, off the golf course into the uh, country club, like the surrounding areas. We were just driving through the neighborhood. There was a woman out front that I remember having her uh, <laughs> let me use her phone so I could call Sarah and kind of check up. You know, it's kind of hard when you realize you don't have any numbers memorized. But hers, was, thankfully, I had that one memorized. And then uh, we literally, there was a frat party we stopped at where I was doing beer chugging contests. Chicken George was doing <laughs> belly flops with the kids. It was just this ridiculously fun, insane day. And um, I'm trying to find the videos because we even, there was this, do you hear the noise in the back of my dog's an asshole? <laughs> Come on. Hi, dog. <laughs> well, this is Negan. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, 72 fat. pound bulldog. Yeah. He'll, he'll get up there again after the story. But uh, so, we just, there was this uh, like little baby hill that we were trying to take it and trying to flip the golf cart and just this whole day of just stupid drunk fun. And at the end, we ended up at this uh, like country club karaoke bar. And we requested, I got friends in low places. And originally I was filming Will and Janelle and then we we're just like <laughs> Chicken George and I, we all jumped in and just sung this thing. And apparently uh, people knew who we were oddly enough, and they took pictures of us and reported it to local CBS affiliates. We got in a shit ton of trouble. Like, they threatened us with everything but actually, like, killing us. So... <laughs> but yeah, I've got, I've got if, a short clip of it. I'll go ahead and play if anyone wants to see it. I'm not big on social races. They now step on down to the... So, old school Big Brother is not boring. Screw you, Tyler. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, was there, was there any real penalty or j just the threat of penalty? So there was the threat of penalty, but we're all in there. And Don Woman, you know, the voice. And it, the whole thing after the fact, we, I was so nervous at first. I don't remember the initial because everyone's yelling at you and you're just kind of like, <laughs> whatever. Like, <laughs> what are you going to do? You know, but then when they started talking about like getting rid of stipends and kicking us off the show, there was like that moment of because this is my second year in a row so i didn't have any detox time or any like real conversations with former castmates other than you know y'all bullshit about your seasons so i was getting kind of nervous and then dr will also was like what are you gonna do like we fucked up we won't do it again we need to like have america vote like a bunch of fucking <laughs> fat cat ladies are they gonna cast like the winning decision for big brother all-stars like you're gonna throw off three of the evilest Big Brother house guest of all time, and Chicken George, like one of the most loved, <laughs> because we got drunk. Like, yeah. it's not like you were going to change our vote, anyways. Yeah. I mean, but it's not the it, boogie. Yeah. The boogie Erica was kind of like Gina Marie and Andy. You know what I mean? It was like there was no contest there. It was not going to happen. Yeah, so, they're just lucky that Chicken absolutely. George didn't, didn't get struck by lightning a third time. Is the only thing that they really should have. <laughs> yeah, right. That would have sucked because he was in my cart the whole time. Yeah. But uh, and I would have missed him. 
there's another video I got of like Howie in his underwear and Chicken George and like some weird outfit that I'm probably going to post that later also. But yeah, it was great that he posted that because everyone's been pulling up all these old videos of stuff on the show and just different things and some of the crap we went through. But um, I kind of felt like that was the iconic one because that was in sequester. That was really the difference between the old school and the new school where we just didn't care. You know, it was like, we're here to have fun. You cast us because of who we are. So we were going to be, we were going to be that, you know, it's like, that's just kind of who we were as people. We didn't mean burn any houses down or, you know, break anything. We just tried to break some golf carts. It was like, we just got fucked up, had fun. And but the entire time you were in this one country club, cause it shouldn't be that hard to find you. Like this shouldn't have taken hours and hours. <laughs> well, I don't, know the actual schematics for how it was set up. I just remember how it was having to drive over lots of speed bumps. We were on like streets in our golf carts. So, right. so whether it was like, yeah, whether it was like a community, the golf, golf community. Yes. Yeah, I'm not a golfer, so I don't really ever go to golf courses. Yeah. But um, I mean, it was a frat party that was backed up to the golf course. And that's, I think once we got done, like, I mean, it's Palm Springs. It's like 115 degrees out there in the summer, you know? And, with all we were drinking, I mean, shit, beer chugging contests with frat boys, like, <laughs> was, we were pretty much gone. You know, I would have got a DUI on that golf cart, certainly, hands down. The but I would have pushed you George over and ran. So. <laughs> well, you were on season six and seven with Janelle and Kaster, who find themselves on yeah. the block. Are you surprised that they are yet again the outsiders with a large majority group in the house and they yet again find themselves early targets? Okay, so the problem with this season, everyone is talking about the pregame alliances. And I know Dan and Derek have taken a lot of heat from the fans, but every single house guest pregamed. And if. Well, would it, not David, I'm not, sure. Not David. <laughs> Um, but like I was talking was to someone the wrong number. <laughs> if, if, if Christmas had called me for a pregame Alliance, I would have laughed. I would have literally had to check with production and be like, yo, this motherfucker is hitting me up telling me that she wants an Alliance. You're not really putting her on the same show. Are you like, <laughs> did she get the wrong email? I get it right. Is this a joke? But, um, anyone else, everyone had pregame Alliance. It's like, I was discussing with different house guests strategies and things like that for ones that contacted me, um, which I will not name, but, uh, so if a certain people did it better, then that's just how it works. Um, unfortunately, it's not all game that I think has been a detriment for Kaser and Janelle. Anyone going into that house, um, especially that component of the house that is worried about fans and this and that, they're, they know that the longer Janelle and Kaser are in there, any fan vote is going to them. Yeah. Any America's Choice, America's Player, AFP, you know, give them some money. It's going to go to Janelle or Kaser. And that is something that a lot of them are probably upset about. Um, you can see Danny Donato I had high hopes for. And she still might do good because she's playing a good game, just kind of throwing everyone under the bus. But um, I think I kind of had a similar strategy in six, but eventually it comes back to haunt you. Um, it's very disappointing to see that one of them will go home this weekend. Um, <laughs> Well, Twitter I has just, another opinion, by the way. I just I saw a Twitter poll, and it was like, yeah, who do you think is going to go home? And it was like 55 or 56% Chanel, 5% Kaser, and the rest, 30-some percent, was there's going to be a surprise twist that's going to save both of them. I hope so that's I heard, going to happen. But, I hope it is. <laughs> That'd be well, great. I mean, I, I want it to happen because I love both of them, but that, that level of shenanigans, uh, I, I would have they, a little bit of a problem with that. Karen, I am with you 100%. As a fan of the game, that's the moment where we're all like, you know, like season nine, I think, where all of a sudden the hamsters were an original pair. That question where you're all like, what the fuck, you know? But um, I think it was season nine, like in the, the final questions. But uh, yes, but as a fan of Janelle and Kaser and as, you know, them being very good, very close friends, I just want to see the house guests shit themselves when one of them would be able to walk back through the door. Oh. Now for TV, keeping Janelle or Taser this week in some sort of like the, the stupid safety suite room, it's empty now. Stick them up there. You know what I mean? That type of stuff, like the camp comeback bullshit from last, last summer, that would be epic because could you imagine the diary room sessions from like Nicole 
and Danny, they would have breakdown. And that would be epic television because we're not going to get the backstabbing and everything right now because it's literally the majority is going to dictate who goes home every single week. If Casey yeah. gets HOH, I don't think he has that sinister side to make deals and fuck people over. I think he's going to agree to do what these people want, thinking that he's going to all of a sudden be in their lives, and then he goes home the following week. Yeah. You know, this is herd mentality shit. Nietzsche goes on about this shit like forever. You can't break that. When you have the herd instinct in people that are scared and like the beta personalities, they gather in groups and you can't break that because it's not about competition. They fear these people on every level. They're more popular than them. They're more well liked. You know, they, these are people that have jobs, have lives, have the things that they want to get in the future. So the quicker they can get them out of here, the better for them, you know? And yeah. I could go on about this shit for hours. Like I, I wish Kaser could shut up. Like he has great <laughs> ideas and great strategy, but he loves to tell everybody. And at week one, week two, you don't know them. You know, you don't know what the alliances are or how things are defined. The reason we were so successful in season six is because everything had already been defined. There were major moments in the house and you had to take it one way or the other. Like when, I went over, when Sarah and I went over to the, to inform the sobs with Kaser and them, Eric had already tried to betray me. You know, all the things were there where it was, you know, it was obvious that I was next on their list. They wanted to get rid of me. They'd already tried. So there were things that were defined that you could make moves and talk about things. And, but there's been nothing like that so far. And Kaser was like, oh yeah, we got safety suite week one. So now let's tell everyone what we're doing. And that was obviously to their detriment. Yeah, and Janelle's told him the same thing, and he's just said, that's not me. I just can't close my mouth. I just can't do it. Uh, so he, he owns it. He'll never not. Yeah. And Kaser's not known as a great player. He's known as a likable player. And favorite, yes. Yeah, I mean, you really? know, no, no, no diss. I mean, he's just, you know, like like Ozzy on Survivor. Ozzy's not a great player. You know, Rupert. People love him. He's a great player. You know, he's just a, you know, a fan favorite. Kaser's yep. an interesting one because he's so strategic. Like, I think that if we're going to play like a tabletop strategy game, Kaser's going to be fantastic at it. But I think that there's something about the Big Brother game that is not a, just about that strategy. It's the social strategy. It's the deception and the concealment that he starts to lose it. Well, you can't step away from it, you know, in any sort of, like if you're in a strategy session for work or, you know, the military, whatever it is, you have your meetings, you go in, you go out. This is Big Brother. You're confined in there. There is no out, you know, and he's always thinking and that's what makes him such, you know, the strategist because he's always thinking and he likes to bounce those ideas off people, but he's bouncing them off the wrong people. You know, mm -hmm. how he hit me up on a FaceTime today and we were talking about this exact thing and we brought up season six and the whole iconic moment of I sealed your partner's fate. Well, yes, that was an awesome moment for television, but I didn't want that to leak out. Because Eric didn't know he was going up because Eric and Kaser thought they had this like bond because Eric had made promises to everybody. I wanted so bad for it to be the veto meeting and Kaser to blindside Eric and nominate him because that would have been, oh, there would have been a blow up. It would have been huge. They probably would have had the security come into the, into the, you know, the house because there would have been fights. It would have been epic television. But Kaser, great one liner, sung it to Maggie. We had a little fight. But imagine if that moment had happened at the veto ceremony where Eric's sitting back there, chest puffed out, thinking that Yvette was going up or someone else. And that he would have been spending the entire week in the diary room talking about, yeah, I got Casey Raptor on my finger. He better not break his word. You know, firefighter this, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, pow, got your ass, bitch. Somehow Happy would have looked even worse. Uh, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> somehow, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, uh, and let me just say for the record, um, since moving to Vegas about, six-ish, seven-ish years ago. Um, seen Eric a few times. He's now back um, up north on the you know northeast side. Uh, hung out with him. Great guy. You know, he's just what – he has a personality, and he, you know, is used to running a fire team and <laughs> being very boisterous and alpha, and, you know, he was outnumbered, outsmarted, outplayed. But he's a great guy, and, you know, family's doing well. So yeah. I just want to put that out there for those people that are going to be like, Kathy's such an asshole. <laughs> do you hate him? I'm like, no, he's, he's he's a good family man. He's a good dude. Skills that make yeah. you a great firefighter don't necessarily make you great in the Big Brother house. Sure. Correct.
Yeah, uh, James, I just want to circle back. You talked about some of the pre-gaming that went on for this season. What was the pre-gaming like for the first All-Stars? Uh, man, I remember, I mean, season six, I thought we were, we were pretty good. Yeah. You know, Cause we didn't have to, we, you know, we had screwed up season six. We were like, Oh, we got this on season seven. We're going to all, you know, we'll do it this time. How he refused to pregame. He didn't reach out to anyone. Daniel Reyes didn't reach out to anyone. Cause they were scared that, you know, if they, they got, if it got out, they'd be kicked off the show. Um, yeah. Wait, real quick. How I talk about this again? Real quick, a peek behind the curtain. What, what a lot of people don't understand is because you see so much pregaming, they put the fear of God in you. I mean, like they 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 flat out say, you know, you're off the show, blah blah blah. I mean, you know, like on Survivor and Big Brother, you know, it's, it's the same qualifiers going in. You know, like I I you know rumor and innuendo, uh, Tyson uh, for Heroes Villains, Tyson called and ratted me out for pregame alliance uh, for fans versus favorites one. I ratted out Terry Dietz for pregame alliance. I mean, like, you know, it, 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 it they they don't like that. And, and, and I, and I, I, I don't either. I mean, I don't like turning on the television for a new season of survivor or big brother with re, with returning players and starting episode one and feeling like I'm on chapter four of the book. Correct. So. See the first all stars, they did a great job by that first week duo HOH where they had to agree on it, you know? And so that kind of worked out better because it kind of split things up. Also, we had to go into the diary room and essentially confess any of our pregame alliances and they wanted to work the conversations into our diary room speeches. So it kind of helped the viewer out. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice this at all this year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a but, lot oh, yeah. going on that we don't, that you know most people don't know about and they're not explaining it. And I'm assuming it's only gonna get worse in terms of people doing things that are very hard to explain unless you know what happened before. Yes. Um, it almost would be, it would almost have to get to the point where CBS essentially asked for access to, you know, your, your phone, you know, and your social media handles and essentially monitors that stuff. And it, there's the, no way to stop this unless something like that were happening. Even then, they people would get around it. You yeah. know what I mean? Get a burner so phone. It's just yeah, completely. Yeah. You know, um, I I, I think just, I think the key would be to over invite. I mean, like on Winners at War, you know, it was an all returning winner season, season forty of Survivor. You know, they knew who was going out there. Well, there's only been you know at season forty, like you know, they called. You know, they called probably, let's say for argument's sake, 26 people out of 40. Why not just call the other 16? You know, well, Sandra won twice. The other, you know, the other 15. Just make that call. Just say, hey, you know, are you interested in, in, in playing season 40? Just, you know, just, we're just gauging it, interest. So when, you know, those phone, you know, so when, you know, Wendell's just like, you know, hey, hey, Earl, did you get the call? Yeah, you know, Fabio, did you? Yeah, you know, like, like, just muddy the water. So it's just like, well, fuck, you know, I can't go into this thing with 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 twenty six alliances. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta kind of kind of narrow my scope, you know. And and your smarter players are gonna figure out, you know, Sunday or uh, Christmas probably isn't coming back. Well, <laughs> <you know? laughs> that phone call might not go out. Right. So, so I, I think um, I think the best key to just from you know look looking at all the op uh, the available options is to just just go crazy with the phone calls and just muddy the water. I don't know what the lead time is on Survivor, but with Big Brother, they start contacting early because to be gone for three months, you know, and longer now, it it takes a lot. If you have a job, there's a lot of things you have to do. If you have mortgage, family, all this other stuff. So I know with Survivor is like thirty. Days. 30 days and when you're off you're done you know what i mean whereas big brother if you go to jury you're still gone so yeah. i think yeah. that's why there's driver we all come back the same day so you don't know how you finish and you have like a week and a half of press so you're gone for about six weeks for survivor okay so and everyone's I mean, it, it, uh, first out you still come home day you know when when the winner comes home we all come home the same um, time normal seasons with big brother you're in pre-sequester for a week to 10 days like yeah. this time i know it was longer than that because of covid yeah but uh did they have so, their phones in, in in sequester i don't know i don't think so um i think that they were they probably 
were allowed to tweet because they were sending out some social media <clears throat> media posts. But um, I mean, they could have set up Twitter on a laptop and just had people logging in, or they could have brought in their phones for that. Or the expectation that I've heard is that they were they had limited iPad use, probably monitored by someone, because all of a sudden people who had never used an iPad before were tweeting from iPads. Um, the, Your brother fandom, they'll find any little tweet. Yeah, so with two weeks in sequester, I have no idea why David didn't watch every fucking season. I, I met him last year when he came to Vegas after uh, his season with the rest of the group. And I, he was one of those people when I saw or heard the rumors, I was like, you know what? Give him another chance because he seemed to have a heart and this drive and he really wanted to play. And I, anyone that leaves first, it, it fucking sucks. Or even before you, you know, put your bags down. But I was incredibly disappointed with the fact that he just didn't do any research, yeah. you know, and this is not a chance that comes around a lot unless you're fucking, you know, you know, where they're like, oh, you know what? But why not put her back in there, you know? Because she's great television and a phenomenal competitor. But the fact that he came in there, and uh, it was very disappointing. Well, not only did he come in with no no research, I mean, he didn't even learn the just fun. I mean, like, he's asking, how does veto work? Yeah. That's not. what. How, how can someone be on an all-star season asking how power of veto works? Yeah. Correct. That's yeah, when, I, I, I wanted him back, I would say, as much as anybody. I was pretty excited. And I said, yeah, it's All-Stars, so let's put aside the name of the season. I'd really like to see this guy actually play. And we did see him play. We saw one thing in the episode last night that made me think, okay, maybe he's playing that game. Right when he didn't just uh, nominate Memphis as a have-not because you knew he wanted to. And he realized that that would not be a good idea. So kudos to him on that. But everything else we've seen, yeah. Well, uh, he did mention he has a, he he did confirm he has a one person alliance, so he should be able to skate to the end. He's got uh he's got the numbers. He's and according the- to his diary room, he's a beast now. He proved himself. Uh, he did a lot of work last week. So, so I think I think the Memphis thing was was a bad decision. Um, I think that he should have put Memphis on there. Um, Memphis knowing him personally and kind of having a similar abrasive attitude like myself, when Chicken George stood up to me, because I didn't think he deserved to be there, he was the floater's target. Everyone was like, oh, we're going to get Chicken George. And I was like, well, fuck, if I get rid of George, then you guys have to take a stand. The moment Chicken George stood up to me, I respected him because you want a competitor. Memphis is, to be cliche, old school like that. And I think if David had been like, all right, Memphis, it's the big league boy. You did it to me last week. I'm doing it to you this week. I think Memphis would have respected that. And to be honest, this would be the perfect week for David to do that because Janelle's going home. Janelle, someone from season six is going home. Are they going to then ignore that next week and be like, oh, let's get rid of the guy who put Memphis on flop? No chance. His name's not even coming up because of all the other stuff going on. So I think Memphis would have respected him, would have been great television. Um, yeah. And I think it would have been a smart move on his part to, to step up. Okay, then he hasn't done anything right. <laughs> he's in there he's got a check so he's doing something right yeah uh james you talk about some of the other old school guys in the house uh we've got memphis enzo are you surprised that these old school players aren't able to work together that's how i thought the season was going to break down that we'd get a true old school new school showdown a hundred percent i thought that that was going to happen but even if you noticed like a lot of the dialogue between caser and janelle on the feeds today they didn't really stay in touch you know that's caser and janelle you know what i mean so and that's as tight as it. I mean, we got we, we got a montage of their closeness. You know, the greatest yeah. best friends in the history of the show. The Jacer shirt available today at johnnyfairplay.com. With every t-shirt, you get a phone call from me, Johnny Fairplay. Thank you for your purchase. Also available today. What the Queen Janelle t-shirt? That's right. Go to johnnyfairplay.com. They're both sitting there. <laughs> and we have one. The commercials, or do we have other ones? Right. Yeah. There. <laughs> but what I was like, Janelle, for example, like. I was at her wedding. We partied in different cities. Shit, she's partied with Bo in different cities. You could have pulled like a montage of a couple of Ashleya for, well, they were friends beforehand. You could have pulled a montage of, you know, clips outside the house of these people getting together. But Kaser and Janelle didn't have that outside the thing. But the bond that they had on the show alone, you're seeing in there because it's, it's pretty, it's unbreakable. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, I think a lot of the old people, Enzo kind of like disappeared. He showed up at a couple events here and there. The, the new school people, they're the ones who are on top of everything. You know, they're out there. They're constantly talking to each other. Um, 
if you're not in the scene for the old school, you probably just went back to your life. Yeah. You know? And, and so I think school, that the new schoolers are, you know, they're, they're newly off the show. So they're just getting invited to hearts of reality for the first and second time. You know, they're just getting invited to the Vegas thing for the first and second time. Yeah. So they, they're all just becoming friends, you know, with, with these, you know, current seasons. I mean, like, you know, when, when hearts reality is sending out invitations, you know, they, they don't think that, you know, uh, a, a chicken. They're not sending it to Memphis. You know, they're not sending it to Enzo. They're just, they're going for the new ones, the ones that people are talking about. Yeah. And, and I think Memphis, that was. Memphis was at hearts reality this past year. Oh, good for him. So maybe he knew something that we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, oh man. But, uh, I was very disappointed that the old school didn't stick together. Um, I think Enzo saw. Danny, for example. Well, first of all, Keisha, what the fuck? Like, she didn't give a shit. She was in there, didn't do anything. Um, didn't even campaign to stay until, like, you know, 30 minutes before the, the eviction episode. So I would have stepped away, back from her. I wouldn't try to yeah. round her up and be like, oh, come on, my alliance, you know, bullet sponge. You know, what is she going to do? Nothing. You know, Kevin wasn't doing anything. Yeah. These weren't diabolical players are people that you thought that you could confide in. You know, Danny obviously is like the rat just mm -hmm. giving away all the information to the other side. If I was Enzo and I saw that, I would have been like, man, it's smart for me to sit back and not do anything, you know, until he can see who the strong alliances are. Look at how good the brigade was. One of the best alliances ever yeah. because they made smart decisions and it was a small core group. So, and I didn't see Enzo joining up with uh, joining up with the old schools just for the sake of old school. I saw Enzo joining up with the dudes because that's his gameplay. Uh, yeah, that's what he does. But think about old school also. All the real old school players, and this is not to slight any people in there, um, they didn't, they couldn't come back. Daniel Reyes in there, whole different game. Yep. You know what I mean? Dan in there, whole different game. He's the one that would have jumped on them. I'm surprised that Danny jumped ship so quick because mm -hmm. they could have had, you know, a pretty powerful alliance, uh, Donato or, yeah. or whatever her last name is now. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was just, it was kind of take out Keisha, take out Kevin. Um, Enzo, I think kind of should be there, but think about some, a couple other players they have, and then they have two strong people in there that could have made old school an actual alliance instead of a pretty good group of new people. And, you know, Kaser Janelle and those other people. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of speculation I've seen all over social media on why can Danny and Janelle not work together this season? What happened with them? Um, that seems to be a big question mark. I can't wait to have answered uh, once they get out of this house because that seems like it should have been an awesome alliance to watch develop. You know what? She told me going in the house that she was going to align with Danny, and I told her not to trust her because if I was in there, I wouldn't trust Danny. She'd come after me, and I'd come after her real quick. Um, but you know, Janelle trusted her and that's where we're at. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get Here into we stuff we saw on the episode Sunday night, um, and kind of where that takes us now. Um, we open the episode after we see Janelle and Casey are in trouble and we see this new alliance forming, uh, the slick six, Oof. um, sort of fake alliance here, um, with. Cody, Enzo, Tyler bringing in uh, Danny, Bailey, and Devon. This seems to just be to appease Bailey and Devon, and not a single person in this alliance seems to have any faith or stock in it. Um, what do we think about how this is functioning? So one of them went into the DR, and the DR was like, probably brought up the fact that their alliance is all white, and they were like, oh, shit, we don't want to look like those assholes like last year. So they made this fake ass alliance that I guarantee we'll probably never hear anything about because they're already talking about if Kaser stays putting up Devon and Bailey instead of them. Like they probably, someone in the diary room was like, yo, what the fuck guys? And they're like, oh yeah. And we came out and made this fake alliance for television because it's not true. They're already talking about putting Devon and Bailey up instead of Kaser. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So Slick Six is shit. Yeah. And t-shirt will not be available at johnnyfairplay.com. Uh, even though I did order my commission shirt. So, cause I figured How that about these six clicks is shit. What about that one? <laughs> how about, how about next week? If someone mentions the words slick and six together, no one will have any recollection of what that means in any 100%. way. Yeah. And can we call for like the next couple of days until it's separated? 
like JSAR or KSAR or whatever they're calling like the Janelle KSAR mix, they're not dating. They're not a hybrid. Just call them S6. You know what I mean? Like for the Sobs. I hate this JSAR or well, The shirt's already made, James. I can't, I, can't, oh. I can't unmake the shirt. I can't. Oh, you actually have shirts, huh? <laughs> that was not a joke. It was not, yeah, johnnyfairplay.com. Go get yours right now. <laughs> All right, so for the sake of Johnny Fairplay's t-shirt sale, <laughs> yeah. JSAR it is. Well, I do have a What Up Kaser shirt that Howie ordered last week. Oh, he told me about that today, too. <laughs> uh, I'm well, like, we find at least ask for like a discount because you were on this show. He's like, I told him you could donate my phone call. I'm like, damn, you get played by everybody, don't you? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, James, if you would like the discount code, I would be more than happy to give that to you off the air. Uh, or if no, I got to save my money for whatever Tyler's selling on his Instagram, bro. Uh, well, give me some, uh, some jewelry. Yeah, yeah, does your wife like jewelry? Uh, okay. Yes, but we prefer a little bit better quality. Just kidding. I don't know how bad or good their jewelry is. You need to get something from uh, Princess. Was it Princess Tuggy? Was, was it? What, what is? Uh, what is she going by now? Uh, Nicole F. <laughs> Yo, you guys see that game? You see? I see that Game of Thrones like ripoff type shit they did on like some casting couch in the corner of a warehouse that was going around Twitter. I did uh, see that. You got to find it. It's Victor on one side um, and like a king's robe. And then you got Nerf on the other side, and like this all white dress, trying to look all Game of Thrones. It was just <laughs> cringe, as the kids say. Yeah. Oh, I need. I just, you have to find it. I feel like I'd be into that. I don't know. <laughs> Do you like Game of Thrones? Well, you know, minus the last season, of course. <laughs> Those spoilers. Oh, that battle was trash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we go into the have not noms. We talked a little bit about the David situation, and we have. A Janelle and Nicole situation. Um, it, man, I hated this. Uh, Nicole says, like, under her breath. Uh, but not really. Talk about me. <laughs> um, and then immediately he's like, I can't believe I said that. Oh, I didn't even mean to. Uh, no no backbone for Nicole on this have not nomination. I, what do you guys think about her calling Janelle out on the spot there? But, but she did mean to. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, like she, she, she sat there explaining for another five minutes. She's like, I really can't believe I did. I mean, I really didn't mean to say that. It's like, yes, you did. Like, I mean, I, 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 I talk daily and words I mean to say out loud, I say out loud and words I don't, I don't. It's not that difficult, especially, I mean, like, you know, I have a three-year-old daughter uh, that, that I'm pretty sure has figured out what, you know, when she says words openly that they are openly said so i might get a word wrong i rarely accidentally say a full sentence <laughs> and, and i would have more respect for her if she was not trying to backpedal and just say yeah i said it but here's the thing that's not who she is she is such a narcissist that she doesn't think that anything she does is wrong because she's not used to getting that feedback she surrounds herself with people that just kiss her ass you know and if you don't she cries about it. She's always the victim. And that's what bothered me so much about that because she didn't like stand up and be like, you know, Janelle, give me that key, you bitch. You know, um, all her other things are out there. They're vocal. Like even when she told her, shut up or stupid bitch or shut up, bitch, um, on the clip that's going around right now, it was completely done. So she would have something else to talk about to bring the attention back to herself. It was done half ass. It was literally done for more attention. It wasn't done to make a point. It was done to get her more attention. And that's why I just found it kind of like weak and pathetic. You know, it's, you can talk shit when you have numbers. You know what I mean? When you know your dude Tyler's on the, the HOH and that they're going up, everybody's brave. If yeah. you're such a badass, you should have gotten in front of her face before the HOH compliment. Like, bitch, you better win because if you don't, you're fucked. That is how you get in someone's face. Mm -hmm. Knowing that you're safe and their alliance and your alliance is going to put her up, you're a bitch at that point. You know, whether you're a guy or a girl, that is just my opinion on Big Brother. Yeah. Don't so talk no, shit yeah, when you know you're going to win. Yeah. So no, I, like she, she's like, oh, I, I just can't believe I said, and then I'm just like, I can't believe I'm surrounded by eight people in my alliance and I spoke <laughs> up to the girl that we're probably all ganging up to send home this week. Oh, you're brave. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's like the little chihuahua barking from their fucking cage <laughs> as all the pit bulls and wildlife walk by. Yeah, you yeah. know, 
You know, everybody complains about her voice. And as somebody, again, who I think I have the world's most annoying voice, I'm not going to go after her voice because she has a limited amount of control over that. But what she can control is her attitude and the fact that she is constantly whining. And I know that it's stressful in the house, but, you know, she's part of the big alliance. She's not in any danger. She yeah. shouldn't be whining all the time. Yeah, if but you once again, she's whining for attention. Everything has to, she has to be the center of attention. She is just that type of narcissist where everything has to be about her. If you quizzed her on the conversations she had with people in the house, I guarantee you she couldn't tell you the things they talked about because she listens to conversations just to find a way to bring it back about her. Yeah. That is why when you see Janelle and Kaser talking, they're talking about things in the outside world. When you go to Nicole, she's bitching about Janelle because it's another way to talk about someone to get the conversation back to her. She's come up with a new. Why. Sorry, go ahead, Karen. I was just gonna say she has a. New, she, I think she's come up with a new strategy, though, that I'm not sure we've ever seen in Big Brother, because we already know the whole thing with her wedding invitation. You know, that Janelle has lost her invitation to the wedding, but that invitation apparently is now available and was given to Christmas. Uh, this was the discussion on the feeds. So apparently, that's the deal: is that Christmas has an, uh, an invitation to the wedding, and in return, Christmas is not going to target Nicole. So is this is how we're going to play Big Brother now? I was saying to Zach before we started, you know, it seems like, you know, spend 20K, you know, prepare a really cool party for after the season. And then just say, you want to come to my party? You know, you can't target me. If it works, it's the cheapest way to win Big Brother ever. But I mean, no, I'm just, I'm over it. It's ridiculous. What, what do I have to do to not go to the wedding? You're doing it, man. You're doing, You're doing it. it right now. <laughs> Sweet. I, mean, I don't think any of us are going to be invited. I don't know. Um, it's good. I, I don't have a Nicole F t-shirt. So. I was going to say, how about, you know, not going to Nicole's Elf's wedding, excuse me, not going to Nicole F's wedding, something. Ooh, all I'm right. Thinking. Not invited. All right. Not invited. <laughs> well, uh, you can make all a right. t-shirt. There uh, might be a uh, Nicole Elf t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who's that guy behind you, Johnny? On Which the wall? One? That's The me. little one with the curly hair? Yeah. Other side. <laughs> I remember meeting that dude like I know, 15 that, years ago, maybe. Oh my God. How much trouble did we get into back in the day? Jesus I don't Christ. remember any of it. Uh, it was, neither do I, brother. <laughs> <laughs> according, according to what my lawyer told me, neither do I. <laughs> yeah, not that this is being recorded and broadcast. I'm now a married man with baby on the way. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, uh, you guys ready to take a quick break? Yes. This episode is brought to you by Fracture. Fracture turns your digital images into beautiful glass prints. That's right, they print your photos directly on glass, transforming your memories into handcrafted frameless prints. Like this one, the one behind me, I have the Survivor NSFW logo with me, Matt, and Zach. Oh my God, it's the coolest thing. I'm so excited to have this in my life. Zach, tell us more about Fracture. Yeah, Fracture helps you focus on the moments that matter most by turning your favorite memories into beautiful glass prints like that one. Fracture prints directly on really durable glass that has soft edges for safe handling. The prints come in multiple sizes and there's no frame required at all to mount it on the wall. And each print comes with a 100% happiness guarantee. That means if for any reason you don't love your print, Fracture is gonna make it right. The glass prints also make unique gifts for your friends and family that they'll never forget. Johnny, can you tell them how they can save? Yeah, but before I do, I received this huge box with my fracture print in it. At the bottom, there's even a screw to go into the wall. These guys are ready for this. Like it's no additional mounting. There's none of that. This thing is ready to rock and roll. And boom, fracture prints look incredible. You really have to see it to believe it. Upload your photo at FractureMe.com slash Survivor to print your photo on glass today. And we have a special deal, and here's what we got. Go to FractureMe.com, that's F-R-A-C-T-U-R-E-M-E.com slash Survivor. Enter promo code Survivor, and you get 20% off your order. That's FractureMe.com slash Survivor with promo code Survivor, and you save 20% off your Fracture Glass Mint. We thank Fracture for sponsoring this episode of Survivor NSFW. Guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go? Oh, man, do I. I've been taking four or five blue chews just to get up in the morning. I use it. I uh, w w Remember when you, what's it called on a, on a bike, the kickstand? Mm -hmm. 
I have my own kickstand thanks to Blue Chew. Thanks, guy. <laughs> well, if you at home can increase your performance and get the extra confidence in bed just like me, listen up. Blue Chew, B L U E C H E W dot com. That's blue, it's color blue. Blue Chew brings you guys the first chewable with the same FDA approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill, so you can be ready whenever an opportunity arises. If you could benefit from extra function and more confidence where it counts in the wiener area, Blue Chew is a fast and easy way to enhance your performance. And Blue Chew is prescribed online, shipped straight to your door in a discreet package, so no in-person doctor visits, no waiting in the pharmacy, and best of all, no more awkwardness. They're made in the USA, and since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our promo code SURVIVOR. Just pay $5 shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-Chew.com, promo code SURVIVOR, and you can try it completely for free. Just pay for shipping. Blue Chew's the better, cheaper, fastest choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Man, these guys are great. Bluechew.com is is kind of like uh, kind of like a hurt Peter. They're hard to beat. And right. we're back. Yes, and uh, uh, just have every question of Nicole. I don't know if you guys saw the house went on lockdown earlier um, because some fan got uh, <laughs> got out behind the fence in the backyard and was yelling "fuck Nicole." So, um, so you can't everyone inside. Like they had they were on the lot. I mean. There's no other way except unless you're in that ravine area that you could even get close enough unless you were on the lot. So wow. there you go. So and if you call probably that- someone from another CBS show that was like just over it. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, speaking of speaking of Nic- sorry, speaking of Nicole, um, as like I know that Nicole F has gotten all the uh, attention, but uh, Nicole A is someone that I really. I mean, the whole shit with Janelle and Kaser obviously angered me, you know, as a friend and someone who's played the game with them a couple of times. But this is a girl that I kind of feel bad for because this this season was way above her head. For her being, like, the nice one. On, like, last season, come on, how many options were there for America's favorite player? Like, <laughs> two and a half, maybe? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, when you come, not saying she wasn't a nice person or deserving, but she, that's the problem. She is a really nice person. And then to be tossed into this, probably with not a lot of people reaching out to her for pregame alliances, I feel like she's probably someone that's going to have like a really hard time dealing with everything she comes out with because the Janelle and Kaser fans online are incredibly vicious. Mm-hmm. So she's someone that I feel bad for. And, you know, I've obviously talked some shit because of everything that went down. Um, I feel like she kind of had a direct hand in hurting Janelle and Kaser, but once again, they shouldn't have been sharing all their shit with everybody. But she's someone that I, I, for you know, the people that are watching this, ease back on her. There's plenty of other villains that are coming out this season. You know, let's give the nice one a break. She came in there and got lied to, manipulated to, probably was in over her head. You're going to have plenty of other villains to fuck with this week. I mean, this, this summer. Just yeah, she opinion, didn't have right. enough time to decompress from her last season. She went in. I mean, it's a lot. You in a row myself. Again. Yeah. And anyone yeah. that anyone that caught the uh, the last uh, commercial plug we had for a uh, blue chew, remember to send your uh, your pictures of your hashtag super hard dicks to at James Rhine. That's J A M E S R H I N E. Just slip into his DMs. Show him how that blue chew is working for you. You're welcome, James. I appreciate that. You know, I don't think I've gone into my uh, my other messages uh, <laughs> since, I, since I've been married. <laughs> Smart. Good, good call. But sure, keep keep sending them. And, um, now that I have your guys' emails, I'll uh, make sure I forward them all over to you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. They're 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 You're all going to be from Blue Checks. You'll get them. Don't worry. Ah, perfect. <laughs> Uh, well, let's move on to the safety suite competition this week. Uh, we've got a lot of people going into this planning to throw it. Um, I don't know exactly who wanted to win this one, but apparently it was Enzo. Um, they're going to be working through a laser course. Um, I was absolutely thinking this was way too easy watching Nicole Franzel go through it the first time. 
And then she pulls out this giant exercise ball that is as big as she is and has to work her way back through all the lasers carrying this thing. Um, we've liked the last safety suite competitions. Uh, fair enough. What did you guys think of this one? We we've seen this before, right? I feel like I feel like this was on several not you know not the safety suite, but I, I feel like this was a, a challenge before, and I, I feel that there was a loophole in it, and, and, I, and I think that they corrected it this time because I think last time that you did it, you know you 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 got to the ball, and then when you're going back, you know uh, once you tripped it, you 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 know where uh, wherever the ball is you uh you you leave the ball and then you 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 restart and i feel like last time it was done someone kind of advanced the ball far enough resetting and and then you know went back and just and went through without the ball so i it, maybe i've made all of that up but i'm pretty sure that that did happen in the past. Someone had an advantage on that. And, and I feel like they course corrected and basically said, you know, when you trip it, you take the ball back with you. Mm -hmm. So I didn't feel like there was any shenanigans this go round, but I feel in the past that it did happen. And, and someone, someone was actually smart enough to advance the ball far enough to where it was a non-factor. I said I would have deflated the ball. You know what I mean? Cause uh -huh. we all know what those exercise balls are like, they have a little, you know, cream colored uh, plug. Boop. That would be really smart. But how funny is it that Memphis takes a fucking nap and still beats Nicole? Wow. Like <laughs> and, and, and the way that they edited it. So I loved it. So, you know, he starts the, be the beginning part of the course. Then he says, you know, I'm just going to sit down for a while. And we get to the La La music. Okay. And then we see everybody else. But I did love, I shouldn't have been so surprised, but I was loved that at the very end, they go back to, to Memphis as if he'd been sitting there the entire time. Yeah. It was, it, it was, was great. Cute. It was cute. Yeah. He cracked. I like the competition. They do it too, and yeah. left over the lasers. I don't. I don't know if this is a. If this gonna is. If this is gonna go into our spoiler section. So if if it is, you know, tell me and then and then answer later. Is Memphis is Memphis as secure in that core six alliance that he has as he thinks he is, or not? Because I felt on what we have seen up until now that. He thinks that's strong, but I don't think they're in that tight with him. Like, like I, I feel like Janelle and Kate was a much better option if he could expand upon that. So this is something that I've literally been kind of toying with because I felt that Memphis would have been very strong with Janelle and Kaser, but the power hasn't been that way. If Tyler hadn't won HOH this week, then I think that there could have certainly been some room for them to work together and it could have been a better week, but with, you know, Tyler winning and Cody, um, uh, that's spoiler with whoever won the veto, it just, it was a good decision for Memphis not to, is he probably first out on his Alliance? Certainly, but it's going to be the way he's been performing so far. Um, other than the first night where he almost died, yeah. you know, um, hopping on those things. I think that, uh, people are probably going to want to take a shot at him when they feel it's unexpected or easy. It's too early to take, to take a shot at him and miss because then he could easily, you know, peel people off. But um, he's obviously rubbed some of the new people the wrong way. They're not used to, you know, people telling them they don't get their participation trophy. And mm -hmm. he would probably be the first person, one of the first people to drop from that alliance. But had power structure been different this week, I think production – Janelle, Kaser, everyone probably could have. We could have. We could have seen some something else happen, but the way things uh, worked out, no chance. Yeah, no, you're he right. Made the right the decision power, based on this. Yeah, if the power had gone differently this week, then yeah, because what I was hoping for was kind of you get, you know, Janelle and Kaser, you know, Bailey and Devon, you get Kevin, you get Ian, you, you kind of put, scoop up everybody who's not tight in that big alliance. Then suddenly you've got two sides of the house. Now, one side is a whole lot better than the other at comps, you know, physical comps, but I'll take it. At least we have two sides of the house. At this point with Enzo, I feel like he's good for a number of weeks before, yes, you're right, when they start, you know, picking off their own, then he's going to probably go sooner rather than later, but he's got a while. Yeah, so it makes sense for him to just sit. And he's not in the six. Well, right. there are a million alliances out there. Yeah. And that's what it, I said. Right, I just, now, right now, it's everyone versus Kaser and Janelle. Yeah. yeah. And when that 
when those two are gone or if there's a weird shakeup next week, then I think power will have to shift around. I would love, love to see Davon or David, you know, win their first comp as an HOH contest this week and see where it goes. Mm-hmm. Me too. Because I, I think – I wish that would have happened, you know, last week. So. Oh, I wish Janelle would have won last week. I wish, you know? I wish anyone would have won but the court. Just, but just, Tyler. Just to see the game, you know, shaken up a little bit. So, I, I, as I said, like, I don't – I. I, I would say I have no dog in this fight, but that's not true. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm friends with, I'm friends with Janelle, you know, I, I like, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm friends with Danny, you know, so, so I, I have friends in the house. So, but you know, there's people I, 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 I like, there's people, there's plenty of people I don't like in that house. And I just like, you know, at, I just take a step back as a viewer and I'm just like, I want to, you know, I don't want to see a, a, you know, a big blob of an Alliance just eat through this game. And that's not good television. Yep. Tyler is playing an excellent game, a great game. It's not what I want to – personally, I don't like it because of the way it's affecting my friends. But he's in a very good position. He's nice. He's not rubbing anyone the wrong way. Um, he's doing what the house wants right now, you know, by getting rid of the big, bad, evil 40-year-olds. Like, fuck, what house is scared of 40-year-olds? <laughs> you know what I mean? Think about it. When you were on your shows, we were back when we were young kids. Were you ever like, oh, my God, that 40-year-old is going to come in and wreck some shit? No, we were like, come on, man. You know, play something. My, you know 12, I mean? my, my 12-year-old and 3-year-old aren't scared of a 40-year-old in this house. All right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and well, so that's where I'm just like, I told Janelle beforehand because she was telling me about how she uh, had hurt her back um, a couple months ago. I was like, save the fucking x-rays. Put them out about a week before you go so everyone thinks you're injured. Come in there in a damn brace. Like, you need to play up. She's like, oh, they're going to target me. They're going to target me. I'm like, no, they're not. You're the 40-year-old mom of, like, 35 kids. Like, go in there playing that old woman in the shoe role. Like, literally, go and put your x-rays online a week before. Everyone's going to see them. You know, go out there and just pretend you're hurt. Pretend you're slow. Don't go in there like I'm Janelle from Season 7. Because if I went back, I wouldn't be going there. I got five Zetos, you know, one season. I'd be like, man, I'm 44 years old. Shit hurts. Things snap like. <laughs> Shit hurts. <yeah. laughs> comp. Fuck a comp. You know what I mean? I'm trying to just make it through the day. Seriously. <laughs> We're different people now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, despite his age, Enzo does pull it out. He wins the safety suite, and he saves Christmas in a strange move. But this was not Enzo's highlight of the night. Enzo's highlight was... Him versus the bidet. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys think of Enzo's bidet struggles, and how did he have such a hard time with it? Uh, the words of Miss Rockstar, disgusting. <laughs> like, who doesn't clean up after yourself? Like, right. damn, son. Who uses the bidet as a shower is what I <laughs> <laughs> Well, point. it's not a shower as long as you stay on the toilet, right? I, did Enzo not understand how it worked? He said the water was too hot. He said the water was too hot and he jumped off. As a result, it got in his hair and apparently got the door and got uh, the floor and got the seat and got. I, I don't know how this bidet is hooked up, but they don't usually have hot water hookups. Uh, so more pressure that's going to shoot across and hit a door. <laughs> like, well, yeah. to be fair, if the water pressure is too high, that could explain him because I'm assuming he was expecting water right to hit his butt but whatever hit his butt was not what he was expecting so if it was much harder and that's why when he jumped off because like you said yes it's supposed to spray but it's not supposed to spray clear across the room yeah you know what they're sewing back there in production fucking with the water pressure when he went in there and was just like oh temperature <laughs> up. water uh, pressure up. hold on you guys recording we got this <laughs> <You> I, <know? laughs> yeah. I would everything like- in there is controlled by someone behind the wall I would like to thank my good friend Krista Joseph, aka Big Dick Johnson, who I'm who I'm pretty sure is responsible for all of those shenanigans and mm-hmm. and uh, making a really weird uh, uh, competition video Zoom thing uh, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> no, I, I I did a little bit of research though on the bidet incident just before we go off on this because you know I think a bunch of us have heard that basically KSR requested it. Um, and so I spoke to my friend, just my friend, Jessica, hi, Jessica, um, you as a practicing Muslim. And she did confirm that, you know, that 
basically Muslims use a bidet rather than using toilet paper. Um, they sometimes can use it to pat, pat dry, but that's kind of about it. Uh, so I guess Kesar requested it. And, and apparently this brand, it's called Hello Tushy. I was describing what we saw and said, yeah, it's kind of like it's right under the toilet seat. Uh, but she yeah. said, yeah, it should not be shooting across the room. She couldn't explain that. <laughs> so I chucked, I chucked that up to Enzo. The meow meow does not know how to use a bidet. Uh, agreed. Or to clean up after himself. Right. 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 So he just walked out. He just walked it and left all the left left all the water. Yeah, that's not cool. Yeah, Get can't eat water. Wait, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I learned I learned that the hard way from Dr. Phil. So I was I was on uh, Dr. Phil. Uh, we did it's an episode celebrity bickering couples, and me and my wife at the time, she uh, she didn't clean, and so uh, you know so. Dr. Uh, Dr. Phil uh, gave me the grand inquisition. It's like, you know, why are you telling her to clean? You know, they don't like, like telling a woman to clean is like trying to baptize a cat. They don't like it. I was like, Thank and then you know, everyone cheered and that was, you know, the big moment. Well, anyone who makes a mess should pick up after themselves. The, yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and hence yeah. I'm not married. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. You gotta do like me, get married like in your 40s, so you're too old to get a divorce ever. Is that you know? how that works? Like, I, I'm hoping so. Just you tap know? tap out know. on life. Yeah. <laughs> All right, noted. <laughs> <laughs> Before the advice James. <laughs> Probably not what I'm here for. Apparently that and to you know talk about big brother. Yeah. <laughs> so question for you guys. Who do you think is in the best position right now? Or is the house so fucking lame that it's too hard to tell? I'm inclined to say too hard to tell, but I do think that Christmas is in a really good spot. Bailey is in a really good spot. And I like where Enzo is sitting. Um, I don't think I any, Bail any of those people, I think they're sitting next to like more obvious targets. And I think they're laying pretty good relationships with the whole house. Yeah, I think Bailey is in an excellent spot. Um, I think Ian is in a pretty good spot for the level of player that he is. Cause remember he's pretty diabolical. So right. you let Kevin sit, you're not really worried about some crazy shit going on later. Christmas. I think her attitude, um, could blow up. People are probably going to get sick of listening to her talk about herself. Um, but right now with the giant Alliance for season six, I think it's going to take a little bit longer to see where people are actually positioned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think I think last week's punishment really helped Ian. I, I think Ian went from threat to lovable. Like like we we got a reminder of like I think everyone remembered how much of a threat he was when they walked into the house. And then with the punishment, He's a winner. I, think, I think everyone got a reminder of how lovable Ian is, and they forgot about yeah. that threat level. So well, he literally I, became the house mascot. So yeah, yeah. So, so no, I, I think, but I still don't have him in my end game. I, I think Bailey's in a good spot and, uh, yeah, probably like, like I, I think Bailey and Enzo are, are, are in the two best spots right now, you know, but I, but with it, all the machinations of, of all the mini alliances going on, you know, I, I don't think either one of those are a safe bet or a win at, the, at this point. Mm -hmm. So too many machinations. Uh, and plus, like, plus everyone's in the honeymoon phase still. Like, you know, it, yeah. it, it's, you know, it seems. No one's been crossed yet. Yeah. I, I think, you know, like, like when, when one person gets crossed, you know, pe people take sides real quick. I mean, because you're fucking bored. You're fu that's what people don't yeah. understand. Survivor, big brother, all these things. If there's not a competition, you're fuck. If there's a, you know, either a ceremony of some kind or a competition, you're bored out of your fucking mind. And so you're waiting for a fight. When a fight happens, it's like pick sides. It's like I'm on this side or I'm on that side. And that changes everything. If there aren't fights, try to start them. Yep. Well, that was my key. Like, as soon as as soon as tribal council is done, it's just like, okay, you know, who what what two people do I want to see go home? And and how can I how can I put a fight between those two people? And if I can't do it, I'll start a fight, I'll walk away from it and let someone else fucking take the take the reins. Yeah. And, and and then the then I got my targets that way. Anyone, any house guests you guys see coming out of there with a the worse reputation that maybe went in being super liked, but coming out not being liked? David. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um 
I think there's some potential for Danny Donato to come out with because yeah. um, she's made a lot of comments that, you know, people are jumping. But then again, Twitter's not the real world, but it is a very vocal part um, of this. But uh, I'd be yeah. interested to see um, if there or if that happens to anyone. You mentioned yeah. Nicole Anthony. I know she's getting a lot of heat already. But you guys let her go. It's, you know, yeah. Oh, no. I, totally agree, but I think that. No, no. I agree. She was like, I can't wait to see her come back. She was a great player. Now I think she's kind of a shrug. Right. I, I don't know if I ever thought she was a great player. I think she's an A-plus person. And she's 100%. a B-minus Big Brother player. She's not a bad player. But when you compare her to Tyler and Danny, and you know, she's not at that level. Yeah. We, we, uh, um, I, I've talked on previous episodes. Have, you've hung out with Memphis, haven't, haven't you, James? Yeah. What do you think? Like, I, like I, my description I've given, like, I have him as a going in. I had him as a bottom tier all star. No, no offense. Just, I just, I just, I. There's many other players I rank higher than Memphis. However, in real life, I, I think the guy's elite. I, I think he's a really awesome, super nice guy. Are, are you with me on that? Or one hundred percent. He is an exceptional business person. Um. He is a great guy. He's super kind. He's not one of those people who you would ever know was on a reality show unless, you know, unless you actually recognize him. He's not, he's not someone that talks about it. It doesn't, you know, he left that world behind. He's, you know, his, actually his, his girlfriend is a friend of mine from Chicago. You know, it's kind of weird how the worlds collide. But um, he's just been a really good dude. I understand when people were talking about him being so abrasive, He's not abrasive. He's just real, you know, and his comments to David about welcome to the big leagues. Yeah. If I was from season, you know, I would have been the same way towards Dave. Obviously I've met him before, so I know him, but to that capacity of a player who was kicked out the first day, shit, I was like, that's a chicken George. Cause he was on season one. You mm -hmm. know, you look for anything you can find to break people down, you know, what else are you going to do in there? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, but it's like Memphis, outstanding guy um, outside the house. I, yeah. He's a good man. Do, do you, you, uh, you chalk it up to him just being real and not like I, I, I felt that like, you know, you know, I told I told these guys here, I'm just like, hey, I know the guy. I think he's awesome. I, th I think he's going to do. I, I think I think if he brings the Memphis I know in real life to to all stars, I think he's going to be great. And then, you know, you watch his HOH dumb and it's just like, ooh, was, was that a fail across the board or, or what? <laughs> By him getting all those people to use their safety suite, I think that was a great play. I think his application of that strategy had some stuff to be desired, but I think getting the, as many people as possible to use their safety suite definitely affected it this week um, mm -hmm. because there were less options for Janelle and Kaser to go to. Mm -hmm. But the way he did it, you know, was kind of abrasive. But that's the thing is Memphis is a business person. He is looking at this as a game. And his social aspect that you and I know him, him in the real world, they're probably not going to see – because he doesn't trust them like that or know them like that, which is unfortunate because I think if he could pull out that real Memphis, he would do a lot better and, and, and go far. But yeah. he's looking at this as a competition, and those are all people standing between him and half a million dollars. Yeah. Well, as we're talking about where people lie at the end of all this, uh, James, my last question for you before we talk about the POV spoilers is um, it seems likely that Janelle's going to go home this week and Kaser's going to be left in the house. Um, we see Tyler starting to make some inroads and talk about potentially working with Kaser. How do you think Kaser's going to do on his own? I, he's never been in the house without Janelle there. Uh, so we're going to get to see something we've never seen before. What do you think that's going to look like? So the Tyler, the case or Tyler stuff, I think is kind of Tyler just being who he is. He's a nice guy, but he's also making sure that he knows that he feels that Kaser is going to stay. So he wants to make sure if Kaser gets HOH, it's not direct revenge. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's just the card he's playing. If Tyler were able to get HOH next week, he would put Kaser up, I believe, you yeah. know, because it's just, it's easy and it's what the house wants. I think he's just being the nice guy that Tyler is by having these conversations. Kaser is a person that you all want to talk to because you learn from conversations with him. You know, he's someone that helps you provide empathy in situations that you might necessarily not have, you know, considered that. He's just a good guy with a good heart. Um, a mm -hmm. little, little bit arrogant, you know, when it comes to the game, and that's been his downfall, you know, 
all these different times. Mm -hmm. But um, he's just a smart guy. So that's going to, it's going to come off like that. I just don't see Tyler and Casey's conversation as anything more than just, you know, Tyler being nice to him because he feels like he's next. And there's no reason to be a dick to someone. Casey has mm -hmm. not done anything to them, you know, so I there's no reason for it. So I think it's just good sportsmanship between the both of them. I am hoping that somehow Kesar, somebody else, you know, attracts a lot of attention for one reason or another, and Kesar is able to, you know, hide and fade back into the woodwork. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I'm hoping again because I, like, I would really like to see what Kesar can do without Janelle. And again, obviously, in this, at this point, you know, he's wildly outnumbered. You know, he doesn't have any numbers. I mean. Clearly, he does not seem to be long for the game. But I'm just hoping that it's going to be more than, oh, we're just going to, you know, take her out, take him out next week. And it's going to be another week where we're just going to sit around twiddling our thumbs until the game actually starts. I think it's going to be pressure cooker, too. Kaser's going to get redemption. He's going to get the HOH and come back at him. Uh, no. That would be amazing. But, yeah, no. Let's, let's get the POV spoilers. Um and at this point, Karen, can you tell us who our POV holder is? Our POV holder is Cody. I would have never uh, guessed that based on what James said earlier. <laughs> and and, and we, you know, we'll have to see the competition, but it looks like apparently it was you know, one of these things with rounds, and it seems like Tyler might have thrown the last round to Cody, which is probably a pretty smart thing to do because Cody's going to- Not if everyone do... knows about it. What? Not yeah. if everyone knows about it. Right. Right, and I'll have to see it to see if I can really see him throwing it or not. But it is, I mean, he is a big threat. Everybody knows he's a big threat and winning HOH and Veto in the same week. If he can avoid that, you know, without leaving, really losing any control about what's go, uh, you know, over what's going to go happen this week, then maybe it was a good call. I don't know. Uh, but Cody won the veto, and he did not use it. Um, Son of a bitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I really need, well, two things. One other thing from the feeds is that uh, apparently Kevin was talking about the fact that apparently at some point he did hang out with Kesar and he doesn't like him. And I don't really know all the context, but right. But like, how do you hang out with Kesar and not like him? Did he hang out with a different Kesar? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, I've never heard that from anyone. If you were right. like, oh, I hung out with Johnny and ah, he's kind of a dick, or I hung out with James and he's kind of a dick, we're all like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I get that. But right. Kaser, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I explained to them on the first episode, like, I uh, I didn't like Kaser on the show. You know, I was just like, this guy is a good guy. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a heel. I'm a villain. I'm a bad guy. I like what I like. You know, I understood why America liked him, but like, you know, that's just not my guy. And then I meet him in real life, like, you know, I, I think at the rap party. And I can, I'm just like, oh, my God, do I love this guy or what? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, there's a reason that 82% voted him back into the house. Yeah. So, right. no, I mean, he's he's one of the most likable people in the history of reality television inside and, and more especially outside of the house. He's just that guy. So. Oh, yeah, like he I, has I, one I catchphrase this. that's brought him this far. You know, the I sealed your partner's fate. Other than that, his game moves have been shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he's still one of the most popular players of all time because mm -hmm. he is genuine, he's real, and you don't see that a lot, especially in today's reality television world. Right. Oh, I see this more as a, an indictment of of Kevin rather than Kaser. Right. Oh, like 100%. Kevin, yeah, yeah. Clearly. I didn't, I didn't, have you met Kevin outside the game? Yeah, I like Kevin. I thought um, when I heard his name being tossed around for All Stars, I thought that um, he was definitely someone that's been overlooked in Big Brother history. You know, he made up that lie about Jeff that kind of screwed over that alliance, and you know, he was part of the Jesse cult um, way back when. But I thought he was a pretty good player. You know, he made Final Three. Why not? Uh, Better uh, that I'm than right. Frankie Grande. Yeah. yeah, he was a little <laughs> arrogant when I met him. Hmm. So, but it was it, it was, was fresh, it was fresh out of the house. So I, I give people like I give people benefit of the doubt. I mean, like you come out of the house crazy. Oh, insane! Yeah, more insane, insane. more insane. Yeah. So I think this was back in our, our Vegas bash days. Right. Okay, and then the only more other blurs. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, and then just one other thing yeah. for 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 feeds, and you're going to be saying this, you know, on Wednesday night, I'm sure, uh, on the episode, in addition to the veto, is so Christmas because she was the plus one in the safety suite, so she gets a punishment. And apparently she has, it's a, a star baby. 
So rather than her dressing up as a star like Janelle did, she has something called a star baby. And if you've ever been, you know, in high school health class or whatever, sometimes they do this, you know, they give you this thing and you have to treat it like a baby. You have to feed it. You have to wake up when it wakes up in the middle of the night, et cetera. So, oh God, you know, I've seen this a million times. But the fun thing is, it looks like they're going to keep giving her. So they gave her one baby. Then they gave her another baby. Last time I checked, she had three. But I've heard that they gave her all of the gear for six. So, and they are, so she's going to have six babies. And I'm sure they're waking up the entire house, not just her. Um, so this is going to be a good long uh, segment, I think, on uh, on Wednesday show. I don't know how funny it's going to be, but it's, it's certainly having, no, but it's having an effect in the house. <laughs> it, it's just good to be keep it again. There's not that much game to be played right now. We're all just waiting for Janelle to go home. But otherwise, it's good because they're not awake anyway. Nobody seems to be up. Nobody can function. At least I can't function when you wake me up five times in the night. I, I, the only I, thing I think we have to worry about is maybe Christmas going after the star baby's daddy and trying to run him over. That's the only <laughs> thing that I would worry about with, with these babies. It could, that, could be, are their original parents safe? Yeah, it could be, it could be multiple baby daddies. So there's, there's, Yeah, there's a lot of people to try to run over then. Yeah. So so I saw something in one of the uh, Big Brother Facebook groups. Uh, Kaser was talking about potentially trying to quit to save Janelle. No, he's not a quitter. Yeah, yeah. but it, it wasn't a quit. It was basically like, like not a not a quit, like like a sacrifice. Like he knows go crazy on people. Yeah. Well, no, he no, he knows the the damage Chanel could do. If if one of them were to go, he knows Janelle could do immensely more than he could if 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 he were the you know the remaining person. I'm not so sure that's true. Because I think Janelle is going to be a target until she's out of the house. They're not going to forget about right. Janelle, which they might, I mean, it's not lately, but they could forget about Kaser. So one of the, I would like to use this example. Season six, um, if Sarah had stayed instead of me, I think she probably would have gotten to the end. Yeah. Because, you know, like as long as I was in there, I was going to be a target. You know, from whatever side had power, I was getting nominated. Oh. If Sarah had gone in there, I don't think there would have been that same dynamic, you mm -hmm. know, cause she would have been like just the victim of the fact that, you know, her boyfriend was an asshole, you know, and probably sealed his own fate. So I don't, I targeting Kaser for no reason after this is stupid. Kaser's targeted now because he's with Janelle, you know, if she had won veto, he'd have gone home because that's her, you know, her partner, her reinforcement. Yeah. But now if we can get some drama and it's not just, you know, 13 people versus Kaser or 12 people, whatever the fuck it is, then I think we'll be good. But Kesa could sit back there and be friends with everyone, you know, till the end. I would love to see that. That would so be. So would I. Yeah. And then Janelle comes in final four, and they compete. And <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, <laughs> that's the only thing that should happen. It's just in America's vote: should Janelle come back or not? Yeah. <laughs> And should ask, and they should ask everybody want. immediately, right? And you have to do that immediately after the eviction. Yeah. Like, and you and want and her and to come back. But there's only one option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be even funnier if like Janelle just goes in, climbs over the back fence, and it's just like, <laughs> sorry guys, CBS, they put me back in here and production's like, fuck it, she's in the house. Yeah, give her her bags back. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> just roll with it, guys, roll with it. She's still Janelle, right? You think she, at 40, you think she can get over that fence? I I'm optimistic. She can get over there. I'm 44 and I can get over that fence. Yeah. You're not supposed to tell people that, James. They're they're, they're watching for all uh, for uh, All Star Three. So. <laughs> all right. I'm going in like Chicken George in a fat suit. There you that go. Happen. <laughs> all right. So who who is your uh, your early who's your early winner pick right now, James? No, oh, I hate these questions. Let me say that disclaimer. My early winner pick is usually the people I can't think of, um, right. or the names that you know you just forget about talking about. Early winner pick for best situation right now, Bailey and Ian find final two, and nobody wants to have Ian win twice, so they give it to Bailey. Boom. I like it. There it is. All right. I also, I also feel very strong about Tyler. I mean, Tyler, the first week was just like a, sh a shell of his own old former self, and I didn't know what was going on. I figured, you know, he was expected to see Casey and Josh, and when he didn't, he kind of freaked out. But uh, he's back. I feel like he's a very strong player. He is. I, he is very strong. When I've been checking in on the feeds, he no one's talking to him a lot. Yeah. He seems to be on his own a lot. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but. 
Maybe maybe homeboy likes to masturbate a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just sitting there with a pillow, and everyone walks in. They're like, oh, "I know what he's doing." <laughs> well, he's got some uh, pretty wild pictures of Angela behind him in some of those HOH clips of her uh, scantily clad modeling. So maybe there you go. It helps. It helps. <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, I forgot one other thing. Not from the feeds, but from uh, Twitter. Um, so Angela Rummins, right? Uh, Angela of uh, BB Twenty uh, did tweet out after last night's episode that. Uh, you know, she's very upset that she didn't get to see uh, Ty read his letter, right, his HOH letter, and she would much rather have seen that than the bidet incident. Yeah. Oh, I remember seeing that also. Yeah. Um, I mean, would any of you have rather seen Ty read his letter? No. Uh, if it means she's on the podcast, I guess, yes, but otherwise, no. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that a good answer? No, the two best parts like of the bidet scene and the Janelle and Kaser montage. So, no. Tyler's had a lot of airtime. He's had a lot of airtime um, for the short season that we've had so far. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a good change up since there's not a lot of strategy going on. It's just people bitching about Janelle, crying about Janelle, mm -hmm. and Tyler making alliances with everyone. That's all we've seen. So, it was good to have, you know, just a little bit of humor and to see that Enzo's kind of a pig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sloppy. Sloppy. Uh, yeah. Uh, James, where can everybody find you on social media? You can't find me. No, um, <laughs> right there in that corner. So, so right there at James Ryan, J M E S R H I N E. And that's on Twitter, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, um, MySpace. No, oh, sweet. Actually, I, uh, but, I have, uh, you in, I have you in my top eight this week. Yes. I'll be nice. replacing you with Portia on Thursday. I would probably do that too. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> Not better looking than me. You know, and shit, didn't she get final two? Yep. Right now I had two tries. Jack shit. Yeah, yeah. All right. But it got me here, so. It got you. Uh, hey. Winner, yeah. winner, taking dinner. Yes, there you go. Uh, James, thank you so much for checking in with us. So. Uh, yeah, I appreciate uh, it. Thanks for having me. It, it's, it's been too long. The last time I saw you, I, I think, I think we're at Chicago. I think we're at like... Were you having something to do with the bar, a bar or Wes from yeah. the challenge? I think. Uh, no, I, uh, I was part owner in a bar, nightclub, patio, and stuff down there. Well, yeah. I pulled off the chairs and went back to Vegas. Yeah, I think yeah, it was, it was like a great me, city. Me, you, Wes. Who was a uh, who was the the uh, Brad? Oh, like this is a long time yeah. ago. Anyway, so, so yeah, so uh, so yeah, all of for, for those of you wondering, all the reality stars back in the day used to all be friends. We all hung out, but mostly just the scumbag villains because we were much more fun, and entertaining than than the good guys. Oh, I mean, obviously, look at the video you just showed. All the villains. <laughs> Who the fuck breaks out of sequester? You know what I mean? To sneak away from your producers, like that is. This old school challenge thing is done because you will not find a better clip that just shows you the zero fucks attitude that we had back then because you only live once, you're gonna die trying, and you need to enjoy your time here. You know? Yeah. Not enough time for bitching and whining and crying and shit. Just have some fun. Uh, no truer words have ever been said. Uh, everybody, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, check out our extended coverage of Big Brother on SurvivorNSFW.com. We'll be back on Thursday with the eviction episode, post eviction episode. We're going to have uh, Portia joining us. Uh, our coverage started um, on Monday of the World Toughest Race. Yes. Tell us all about that, real quick, Zach. Uh, it's pretty incredible. It's Eco Challenge, which is the precursor to Survivor that Mark Burnett did, and it's back on Amazon Prime. Uh, there's 10 episodes. You can stream them all now, and we have weekly coverage interviewing some of the contestants, some of them who went quite far, some of them who were prominently featured, others who were behind the scenes, and we're getting all those behind the scenes stories. So check that out also on SurvivorNSFW.com. Yeah, and if you'd like to support the podcast, go to Apple Podcasts, click subscribe, rate us five stars. If you don't like us, don't do it. Well, subscribe, but don't leave negative or one star or any of that crap. doesn't help anything. just hurts. And so be kind. And uh, the best way, of course, to support the podcast is to uh, become a patron. Go to adfreenSFW.com. You get added to the secret uh, Survivor NSFW Patreon group. We do a weekly Q&A. We do a monthly Zoom call. We have weekly trivia. We uh, we also rate the seasons. It's a really fun group, and you get ad-free versions of the shows. It's really cool. Go to adfreenSFW.com. 
James, Zach, Karen, thank you, everybody. This has been fun. And until next time. Good night. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye, guys. Summer's here. It's crazy hot outside. We all know that you should drink more water. And by the time you feel thirsty, it's too late. You're already dehydrated. You can't focus and you feel tired. Drinking enough water is critical for a healthy lifestyle. It increases your brain power and boosts your productivity. It prevents headaches and increases your total focus. Not only that, it improves your skin and mood. It helps your digestion and it gives you energy. It prevents bad breath and can even help you lose weight. Holy moly, this is the dating cure of if I've ever heard of one. But how much water should you drink each day? 10 cups, a gallon? The good news is it doesn't have to be that complicated. And that's why I start my day with Hydrant because Hydrant helps you hydrate faster. What is Hydrant? Well, they've created a refreshing electrolyte powder that you mix directly into water to more efficiently and effectively hydrate your body. It hydrates you quickly and keeps you going for longer. Each rapid hydration mix has the four essential electrolytes your body needs. Sodium, potassium, magnesium, and zinc. And it packs a punch to help your body hydrate fast and stay hydrated. And if you're looking for that extra boost of energy, there's also Hydrant Plus Caffeine, which contains 100 milligrams of caffeine, all from green tea. And Hydrant is backed by research. The formula was developed by an Oxford scientist. It's also loved by pro athletes like yourself, Johnny Fairplay. Oh yeah, did I mention first place in the men's masters in my last 10K? That's right, thanks to Hydrant. Top performers, celebrities, as in thousands of five-star reviews. It's made with real fruit juice powder. It's delicious and refreshing and comes in a wide variety of flavors, including new summer friendly iced tea lemonade and fruit punch. I'm loving the fruit punch, but I go back to the blood orange. That's my favorite and winning a 10K thanks to Hydrant is all the proof I need. Not only that though, it's also backed by a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you don't love it, send it back for a full refund. You really need to try it for yourself to see what I'm talking about. It tastes incredible and it works. Hydrant starts at just a buck a packet for a 30 day supply and you can save even more with a monthly subscription. But Johnny, tell them what kind of special offers we've got for them. We got a special deal for our listeners right now. Save 25% off your first order. Huge, 25%. Go to drinkhydrant.com slash survivor and enter our promo code survivor at checkout. That's D-R-I-N-K-H-Y-D-R-A-N-T dot com slash Survivor and enter promo code Survivor for 25% off your first order. Drinkhydrant.com slash Survivor and enter promo code Survivor to save 25% and we thank them for sponsoring the Survivor NSFW podcast.